Next level. From the theological perspective, there's a lot of overlaps, okay? And, you know, there's been a lot of religions that no longer exist and blah, 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 and the hieroglyphics and this and that. One religion that completely fascinates me when it comes to the subject of alien life. Now, remember, for me, the definition of alien life for me is anything we don't understand, okay? And, and the concept that people think it's in space, I think it could just be in a different dimension. My true opinion, what I'm, what I'm really believing is this alien life is in another dimension. This is I where absolutely my, agree. This is where my, 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 my journey has led me. It's not out in the space that we think of as space as they've told us, but it's literally in a parallel dimension. And I, I kind of want to take you down my wormhole and I kind of hear what your opinion is. When you learn of the Abrahamic fates, you learn of what's called the demonic realm, right? So, again, a demon is, a, in my opinion, can be... It's, it can be an alien. I mean, it's something you don't understand. It's something foreign to you. It's not the same creation as you. It's a completely different being. When you study like Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Islam fascinates me when it comes to this subject matter. So I don't know how much you've gone into it or how much you know of the tradition, but they talk of a species known as the jinn. And I'm sure you've heard that term before. When you study their teachings, okay, first and foremost, what's fascinating is Solomon the prophet was mentioned in all three Abrahamic faiths. And there was always an obsession with the occult, with Solomon. So I don't know how much you know about that, but I'll give you my two cents on it in my opinion. So Solomon, and the legend has it, you know, during the Crusades, they went under the temple and they found sacred knowledge, secret knowledge, and that's how they took over the world and the Masons turned into the Illuminati and blah, blah. That's, you know, how a lot of people kind of understand it, Right. But what was Solomon's power? See, every prophet based in the Abrahamic faith had a superpower. Like Moses had the rod. But Solomon had the power over every living creature. He could speak to ants and the ants could speak to him. He could actually speak to them. He actually, they actually have their own language, which science is right now proving, by the way. But what was even more fascinating was, based on the Islamic perception, was that he had power over the fourth dimension the species of the jinn. He was able to control them. And in the Quran, it's mentioned that they helped him build the temple. They would dive to the bottoms of the depths of the deepest sea, and they would bring back pearls and jewels. And then there was a foreign kingdom, and you can look this up when you get a chance. I think you'll find it fascinating. There was a queen known as Sheba, and he had sent you know, the request to... Yeah, I know all about that part, that part particularly. She, yeah, keep she, going. The jinn said, oh, I'll do that. And he, he requested that it brings the throne, that, he, that the jinn would bring the throne back to him. And within a millisecond, that throne appeared. Call it teleport, call it whatever you want. It's mentioned in this book within seconds. Then in the tradition, which is known as the authentic sayings of the prophet, some of them are not authentic, some of them are authentic. Testaments is what you could call them. There was mentions of abduction by the jinn possession and again when i use the word jinn it just literally means demon but people when they think the word demon they think bad only where the islamic uh, the islamic tradition that these demons can be good and bad they have free will they possess the earth before us they were on earth way before us and there was another species before them that we know very little of so there was one species known as the bin then the jinn came which was what's called the species of the devil basically the satan that's his race. And within that race, there's different types of jinn. They have different powers. They can shape, some of them can shape shift. So this is where I started noticing the overlaps with a lot of the stuff. And I'm like, okay, but this is the only religion that actually gets into it this deep. It, it blows my mind away. So, for example, they have one that is known as the silat. Sila is a supernatural creature assigned to the jinn or ghouls. These spirits are classified as being one of the most malicious class of jinn. Then there was one known as, um, where is it? Uh, Shape-shifting. Yeah, that's the one, the Silla. They shapeshift. So they can look like human beings. They can look like dogs, snakes. They can take any possession. What a lot of people believe in, and the Quran gives some clues to this, it says that these humans, Illuminati, whatever you want to call them, they took these beings as their own gods. These beings demand blood, sacrifice, anything that's sacrilegious. 
evil energy is what feeds them. So when someone is in cooperation with that class, and this is why the occult has an obsession with Solomon. Solomon had power over this dimension and that dimension. And the reason most of their rituals are on checkered boards is one is the dimension of light, one is the dimension of darkness. So these rituals, they always have the, colum the columns of Solomon. It was the obsession with Solomon who had the power to control the jinn. And there's many different types of them. Some that fly. The Quran mentions they try to steal knowledge. So when they go up into the heavens, the God source, as you would call it, strikes them down with fire. So it's very fascinating that a lot of this seems to be overlapping in different ways. And I'm not saying that, you know, someone should go and become, a, you know, a Muslim. But I'm just saying people should research this stuff. <laughs> Black magic. 100% I believe in it. I've been exposed to it. I've experienced it in my own life. The evil eye. So on and so forth. But what I found fascinating, where my journey took me, was the study of Aleister Crowley. And I want to tie this back because I got a problem with Scientology. And I got a problem in some ways with what I think is an agenda to make people think we were created by aliens. So where, where I'm coming from that is this. Aleister Crowley, anyone that doesn't know, and I'm going to pop the picture up and the name, and I've spoken about this. He is the father of the occult here in the United States of America. Alistair Crowley's students were who? Ron L. Hubbard, founder of Scientology, and a man by the name of Jack Parsons. Jack Parsons is why we went to space. This is a fact. I don't know if you, how much you know about that. I know a lot about Crowley, and, and I'm familiar with what you're sharing. Yeah. So Parsons was... I, I can't wait to tell you what I know about Crowley. Go I ahead. I can't wait to hear this. Was Crowley's student. And they were doing occult stuff and orgy and all that, whatever. Make the story short. We know from we know from Alistair Crowley that he was contacted by a being named Lam. The being, when you look at it, looks like an alien today. What we would have in our minds of what aliens look like on TV and movies. It looked like a gray alien. Like a gray, exactly. Then Jack Parsons does something which I found fascinating. He says he was contacted by a being called Belio the Jal. That was the name of the being that contacted him. In the Arabic language or in Islam, the word for the antichrist or the anti, you know, the false prophet or the false leader, that word is called Dajjal. That's how they actually, if you ask a Muslim, what does the antichrist mean? The word is Dajjal. That's the word. It means the imposter, the false one, the fake one. And this guy who's not a Muslim, not an Arab, invents the reason why. He's, his rockets are the reason we went to space. We penetrated the atmosphere, Okay. He sees a vision where this being comes to him and says, you're very important to my mission. I'm going to help you. And when we look at technology from, from our own, at least from what we know of it in our history, we were kind of like this. And then all of a sudden we just go like this. Right. I th and I think a lot of this stuff was literally inspired by that dimension. And I think, and I asked you if you knew about this off the air, they have created a portal. That portal is in Switzerland right now. It's known as a hydron collider, halogen collider. The biggest discovery in physics, I'm sure you, 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 your mom would know about it and all that, is the CERN project. They found what's called the God particle. Mm -hmm. Here's all I need to say to anyone to, just to start their journey, I think, and make it even simpler. Whether you believe in alien life or demons or whatever you want to call them, because I think throughout the history and out the times, people confused. It's one of the same thing. It just depends how you want to categorize it or how, what do you want to call it. You understand? Do you want to call it a demon? Do you want to call it an alien? Either way, it's an alien. You get my point? I think what people need to study and research is the fact that they've already pulled in matter from a different dimension into this dimension. That's already a fact. God knows what they've already done ahead of that. They've told us, yeah, we were able to pull in this piece of matter from that dimension into this dimension. They did it. It's called the God particle. It's already happened. So they're able to speed up material at the speed of light and create mini black holes, basically, is what they're doing. They're creating mini bing, big bangs, black holes. And they've already taken matter out of that dimension and brought it into this dimension. This is a scientific fact now. This is no longer a theory. My only question to anybody that does their research, and that's CERN, C, like Cat, E, like Edward, R, like Robert, N, like Nancy, is that if they were able to pull in material from a different dimension into our dimension, this has already happened, What's to tell you that there's not something living in that dimension? That's all. 
if they were able to pull matter in from that dimension into this dimension, what mean? How can you not be certain that there's not something living in that dimension? I think these beings that we're talking about inspired them and has created a way for the, to bring them directly into our dimension, which is why now they're finishing the final final. This is just my opinion, but I want to hear your two cents on it. Finally, conditioning of mankind because we're going to see these things with our own eyes. I truly believe that. Otherwise, the government would have declassified through the Pentagon that UFOs are real. We're going to see these things with our eyes, but they're going to give us the narrative because we didn't do our homework. We didn't research. We didn't go deep enough into the knowledge. And they're going to give us whatever narrative they want, and the masses are going to take it. But I find it fascinating that this machine is going on full blast this next year from my understanding of it, and the coincidences of UFOs being declassified. I think we're going to see some insane things, what we would consider insane. Me and you won't, but the masses will. And then whatever agenda they have is going to play out. And that's what I'm worried about. Let's go.